Hi, I'm Raymond Ball. In this short clip, I'm going to explore the decline of morality and ethics in popular media. We will take a look at the possible causes and present both sides of the argument so that you, the viewer, can understand the issue and know what you can do about it. Today, many people are becoming more aware of the lack of morals and ethics shown in popular media. Movies and TV shows are full of pornography, profanity, and other things that would have been shunned and censored if these media outlets had existed a hundred years ago. People all over the United States and all over the world are wondering where the decent, family-friendly entertainment has gone to. After all, most of us do watch TVs and movies for entertainment, so why should we have to make the kids leave the room when you change the channel? Why can't you enjoy a film as a family without wondering about the negative effects that sexualization or violence might have on your kids? Popular media was not always full of this filth. I quote a concerned individual, I find this liberated age morally and intellectually void of any redeeming qualities. I must admit that when I was a teenager, lifestyles were, in comparison, almost puritanical and teenagers felt that life was too restrictive. Today, the restrictions have indeed been relaxed. In fact, I see very little sign of any restrictions on content and explicitness, and I find this both annoying and insulting to my concepts of decency and morality. I search through the movie listings to find a film that would be enjoyable. No assurance, because most films contain offensive scenes and dirty language that are completely unnecessary, and rather than improve the film, undermine its enjoyment. Children today have, in my estimation, pitiable role models to try to find. It seems the lower the mentality and the poorer the performance, the higher the admiration is for. More often than not, profanity and sex scenes do nothing to further the plot and only give it the film a PG or R rating. These movies, however, continue to be smash hits and make billions for film and television hosting companies. Why? Who is controlling the content of popular media? Is it you, the consumer? Or is it the owners of media companies with an agenda? One thing that is important to note is that popular media companies are ruled by the almighty dollar. Everything they do is to make a buck, whether it is stripping nude for millions of people to see or shooting an innocent bystander in a movie. One could then argue that we as viewers are fueling this lack of morality and the fault rests on our shoulders. We are the ones with, mo with the money, then we pay to see these things. The media business is a very competitive business and the company's success depends solely on ratings and the number of viewers that they can hook onto their show. Without us, these shows would not exist. On the other hand, television and movies have become deeply ingrained in our culture as a primary source of entertainment. If someone does not own at least one TV and go to see the newest movie at the theater, they are often viewed as someone from the Stone Age. Sitting down watching TV is a much easier way to pass the time than bringing out a board game or playing ball in the yard. A movie sounds like a much better alternative than organizing friends in a game of pickup basketball. Media companies know this, and they have come to realize that people will watch whatever is on TV rather than turn it off and do something else. They can now show anything that they want to without losing a significant number of viewers. Now, I am by no means saying that we viewers are a bunch of amoral, soulless sheep that will watch anything put in front of us. Many concerned parents turn off the TVs and preview movies before sending their kids to the theater. While this may seem restrictive and 50s-like, I applaud this as an off effort to curb the filth that is seen in our popular media. However, the root of the problem lies elsewhere and will have to be changed in another way. To explain, let me ask you a question. How does a person measure morality? How does one determine what is right and wrong? While many people would like to say that society or the individual determines that, the correct answer is religion. Religion provides the only yardstick of morality. We consumers, especially in America, have taken the freedom of religion to an extreme by silencing those who are outspoken about their religion. We have forced people to practice it in their closets by saying, you can believe what you want to believe, but just don't force it on me. While this protects us from having the religion of others forced on us, people have taken it too far and prevented others from sharing their faith, something clearly protected by the First Amendment. William Bennett says, most important, we must return religion to its proper place. Religion provides us with moral bearings, and the solution to our chief's problem of spiritual improvements depends on spiritual renewal. The surrendering of strong beliefs in our private and public lives has demoralized society. My point is that in order to remove the junk and filth from the media, we must turn back to religion as a society and as a country. But do we really want our media to change? 
Are we really happy with the violence and profanity? Well, a simple answer is yes. Even though millions of people censor the media allowed into their homes, the nation as a whole is too comfortable with the current content to demand change. Even though teen suicides, school dropouts, and bullying, things that are directly related to what we put into our minds through media, are at all-time highs, the cost of taking a stand is too high to give up the comfort of letting things stay as they are. So is there any hope for those of us who would like to see things as they were 60 years ago? Is there anything that we can do to help society turn away from the path it is taking? Well, yes, there is hope. What we need is a social revolution, the type that starts one person at a time. While popular shows are viewed by millions, those millions are made up of individuals just like me and you. Just taking a stand for what you believe in and what you believe is right can go a long way. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Thank you.